What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out Jim Cornette reviews Jacob Fatu's debut slash Cody Rose versus Solo Sokoa on SmackDown. I've been waiting to check this out because Jim Cornette has been a very big fan of Jacob Fatu and he's been wanting Jacob Fatu to be involved in this bloodline stuff for a very long time. So, the fact that we finally have him on WWE television, I already knew. He was going to definitely enjoy this. So I want to see what he had to say about this. Because, I mean, this is the talk of WWE right now. Jacob Fatu is now officially in the company and a part of the biggest storyline, you know, arguably in WWE. So let's get right into this one, man. But then it's Cody and Solo. And Paul says, I told the Tongans they took care of business. And then he reveals... Roman Reigns had agreed that CM Punk was hands off because of he's personal to me. And Cody is not supposed to be handled by you. He's supposed to be kept in check until Roman Reigns gets back. And Solo stops him and says, I hate to tell you this, wise man, mm -hmm. but Roman's not I coming, coming back. back. So good. And then he turns and starts walking to the ring and Paul's like, ah, ah, how can this be? How can this be? So at that point, now we don't know what the fuck's going on. And then the match starts with eight minutes left on the air. So I'm saying, what the fuck? They open hot. Solo, by the way, is doing those phony-looking open-handed slap punches like the Usos do, and it drives me crazy. <laughs> and after about a minute on the floor bouncing around, they go back in the ring, and the Tongans hit for the disqualification and start jumping on Cody. You knew something was going to happen. And Orton's music plays. And here comes Orton and Owens. And they hit the ring, kind of have a lackluster six-way. And they dump the Tongans. And then Solo is in the corner with the three faces, and he mm. begs off, and, the, and he's starting, you know, please, please. And then he laughs. Yep. And he laughs louder. And then suddenly in the ring from behind Jacob is Jacob Fatu Jeez. under that name. Uh. <laughs> the Samoan werewolf. Oh, werewolves <laughs> of Samoa. Oh. <laughs> And now you see... That didn't sound like a what? wolf, that second one. That sounded like a little oh. dog. <laughs> but now you see how to get over. He fucking, he throws the super kicks. He clotheslines Owens. Owens takes a hell of a bump. He throws him out to the floor. He Samoan drops Owens on the stairs. Then he runs around the ring and spears Orton through the fucking barricade. So good. Then he grabs Cody and gives him a rock bottom on the apron and then clears off the desk and puts him on the desk, goes to the top rope and dives from the top rope to the announce desk with a splash and beautiful demolishes bro. the whole goddamn thing. So fucking good, bro. And then they all get, he's wiped out the top three baby faces. And I mentioned that when I was talking about, is he, has he, is he the most... Like, has he surpassed everybody else in this new bloodline faction? And you can bring up the fact that I don't think I've ever seen a debut like this in a sense of, and I'm not talking about Nexus, because Nexus, that was different. That was fucking cool, too. But it was multiple people. It's one guy who packed up the top three baby faces, arguably. Arguably, but Randy Orton for sure. Cody Rhodes for the top guy. And Kevin Owens, who's still a, an upper guard, upper card guy, he packed them all up by himself. You don't see that. You may see it with a faction, but you don't see it with one person. That's that's the telling sign that okay, he's supposed to be a big deal. And then they all get in the ring and the bloodline and put up the one finger. Now you got two Tongans, you got Solo. And you got Jacob Fatu, the Samoan werewolf. Ooh, yeah. And he's lost weight. He looks in great shape. From 
Five years ago at MLW, I bet he's lost 40 pounds because mm -hmm. he was wide and thick and still doing that stuff. But for longevity of his career and his health, he the shit that he does, he need he needed to lose a little weight, but he still he plays big. Mm -hmm. He's not. I don't know how tall those other guys are, but I've stood next to uh, Jacob. He's my height, or maybe an inch or two shorter. But he plays big in the ring. He looks big. He takes up his space and the facials. Yep, the facials, bro. The fa he, this guy looks out of control. He's got the weird fucking multicolored hair. Mm -hmm. He's got the scraggly facial hair. Remember, I, I've, I've been talking about Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, but fine, great. They look too clean. They look too normal. He doesn't. You can believe that they got this guy out of either a jail or a nut house. And he hasn't even done his best stuff yet. Nope. He and, just and his target. I know somebody's going, oh, Cornette, for a, for a fucking guy who hates just moves, moves, moves. Now you're talking about the guy's moves. Yes, I'm talking about a goddamn personality that can come in and get over like a fucking maniac that can do jaw-dropping shit while he's doing it. Yep. That's the key. He doesn't look like a goddamn 16-year-old nebbish oh. from science class. What the fuck? He looks like somebody that will eat your fucking pet dog. <laughs> so, I mean, again, he looks great, but still not too clean. He's crazy. And you saw Paul in the background covering his eyes and he, he's he's scared of these people yeah and now i'm just thinking and this is why it plays into the fact why solo said he's not coming back because he knew he has somebody he this is the bloodline he has this is the bloodline he wants this is what he wants so or is it what the rock wants we'll see you got Solo, you got two Tongans and, you got Jacob. and a Jacob Fatu. Well, you got a couple of Usos, wherever Jimmy is. You've got Roman Reigns, and they just signed Hikalula? Mm -hmm. Hikaleo. They signed Hikaleo. They trademarked the name uh, Tala Tonga, I believe. I saw something else that said they trademarked, I think, Caesar Sokoa. Right before I saw Jacob Fatu debut, so I was like, oh, no, don't change his name to that. We'll see. I mean, the other interesting thing is, and it may make it, eh, I don't know. If you needed a fourth person, if you're just going based on that, Solo, Jacob Fatu, okay. the Tongans, Roman Reigns, a reunited Usos. Remember, Sami Zayn was a big part of that story for a long time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have been saying well, that, Well, I'm not, uh, I'm not denying that and i would imagine Sami Zayn would probably be a big star more over than a yeah. new guy they're bringing in yeah fresh but it has to be all bloodline doesn't it doesn't it have to be the 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 inner struggle for power in the he was an honorary oos for the record but mm -hmm. oh god damn point. it i get your point mm -hmm. he's he's not just white he's translucent still it, it's you know it's it doesn't look the same Said honorary. I, get, I, I didn't get, say. Uh, well, he could be. Saying. He can be honorable all he wants to be. But anyway, so we got the werewolf. He got him. He looked like a million bucks. They made him. They they put him over big time on commentary as it was happening. Yeah. By name. Oh my God! Look at what he's doing. And the Tongans. The moment at the end where they walked up and they... Solo and Jacob are at the front, and they all do the one finger. The Tongans almost looked like worried or yes, and they I were... like that, and that I'm glad they talked about that, and I, I want more people to pay attention. They look confused, they look concerned because they didn't know this was happening. They was just like, uh, okay, like what the fuck? That's why I say, and it's giving me the idea that maybe Jacob Fatu may be too much for Solo. I'm being dead ass. I think. He may switch, and they may end up getting the other person that they have that's already a Tongan. I think someone switching sides, because they have one more person coming in, someone switching sides. And I do think it's maybe Jacob Fatu, because I think he's going to be uncontrollable. Solo's not going to be able to control him. 
So I don't know. We're looking at him sideways like, oh, shit, this fucking guy showed up now. We might be in trouble. And if yeah. they really wanted to, like, you know, build it up, just make it real. This guy has a record. This guy's dangerous. WWE yeah. was scared to go near him. Yeah. What is he doing here? Yeah. That sounds familiar. Didn't I say that a couple months ago? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the question now becomes Roman. <laughs> what yeah. happens with Roman? How many more people are going to get introduced into this? And when does Roman return? What is Roman doing? We haven't heard anything about, is he making a movie? Is he sick? I don't know where well, he is. Well, no, he, he got on his plane after WrestleMania, and he flew somewhere. And apparently he's going to be there until he decides to come back. With no phones or, or uh, TVs or anything, any form of Apparently. And that's the thing. You know, you can get away with having no TV, but no phone. Yeah, especially to Heyman. Poor Heyman. He's like waiting yeah. by the phone. He's got a good plan. Call Roman Reigns. No answer. How much do you think Paul Heyman pays for that fancy Dan voice activated <laughs> telephone service and plan he's got there? Telephone oh, I'm service. fairly certain no matter what it costs, he turns in a receipt. Oh, well, I'm pretty sure he turns in a receipt, even if it didn't cost anything. But <laughs> wow. that's the Paul Heyman way. However, I bet you he's overpaying because I bet you that. They're While he's been living ad. on the island of relevancy and trying to <laughs> They're going into an deal ad. with all of these warring Samoan factions, <laughs> he hadn't been keeping up on the fact that you don't have to pay a fortune anymore for a good telephone plan. <laughs> That's good. I like how they, they transition in that. But yeah, I, I really wanted to see what he had to say. We all know Jim Cornette loves him some Jacob Fatu, been wanting him there. And I do like the fact that what they said play up the fact that he does have a history and this motherfucker is dangerous and not to be messed with but i also want them to keep playing up the fact that solo thinks he can control him but he can't and that's gonna be telling because i do think i just believe he's going to be the guy that defects it's going to be him because they can't control him. He's going to be doing things even solo. And the tongue is going to look at him like, yo, what the fuck? He can't control him. I don't know. I don't know. This is going to be interesting. They, they can tell some stories here just with him being here because we know this guy is legit dangerous. So. We'll see how things play out. This was definitely dope. Appreciate all the love and support y'all have shown on the channel. Let me know some other videos y'all want me to check out, man. But uh, I'll I catch y'all on the next one. Peace, man.